Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about what we call the divergence test. And as the name of this test suggests, it's used to test if a series diverges. So let's go ahead and give the statement of the theorem that is the divergence test. Then we'll go ahead and talk about the proof of this test and then look at some examples of using the divergence test. So when we're using the divergence test to see if a series like the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n diverges, what we do is really look at the limit of the terms in that series. That is, we look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the a sub n's. And so what we see here is that if we take this limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n and it's equal to some constant c that is not equal to zero, or the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n does not exist, like it just alternates between two values or goes off towards positive or negative infinity, then that condition is enough to guarantee that the series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of these a sub n's is going to diverge. An important note to keep in mind when we are using the divergence test is the converse of this theorem is not true. And what that means is that if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, or we take the limit of the terms in our series, and the limit of the terms approaches zero, that alone does not guarantee that our series is going to converge. And that really is why we call this the divergence test. All this test does is test if the series diverges. Uh, not passing the divergence test uh, does not mean that it's going to converge. It means it's inconclusive. We have to do more analysis to figure out if the series will actually converge. So next we're gonna look at the proof of this theorem that gives us the divergence test. And the start of our proof is just remembering that little trick we can use for our series to recover the general nth term, or we can think of that as like the, the last term in a partial sum. So the general nth term a sub n can be uh, found by taking the difference between these two partial sums, the sum from i equals one to n of a sub i, and that's remember that is gonna be the sum of the first term, second term, third term, up until the nth term. And then we subtract away from that the partial sum that starts at i equals one, but only goes up to n minus one. This will be the sum of the first term, the second term, the third term, up until the second to last term, which we mean by, and what we mean by that is the n minus first term. So that's the same sum as here, except it's missing that nth term. So the next step in our proof is we take the limit as n approaches infinity of both sides of our equation that we have above, so that'll give us the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, the limit of the general term in our series. And on the right hand side, we can uh, take the limit as n approaches infinity of each of these two sums and apply some of our limit laws for sums and really break this up into two limits. The limit as n approaches infinity of the first partial sum, the sum from i equals one to n of a sub i, and then we subtract away from that the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals one to n minus one of a sub i. And so the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is the thing we're kind of investigating here. So that's gonna just uh, remain the same for now, but the right hand side is something we can work with a bit. So if we think about this, this is the uh, partial sum of the same series, essentially just represented in two different but equivalent ways. The only difference between these two partial sums is the first partial sum has one additional term added on to it, that nth term, but we have to remember here, we are eventually gonna be taking the limit as n approaches infinity of each of these partial sums, so that next or missing term for the second sum will eventually be added in and catch it up to the first sum. And so now what we do is we uh, make the assumption that, well, what happens if the, uh, the series actually does converge? Well, that means the limit of any partial sum is going to eventually converge as well. And here, both of these partial sums would eventually converge to the sum of the series if our series actually was convergent. So let's go ahead and suppose that our series does converge and it's gonna to converge to some number. Let's go ahead and call that number S for the sum of our series. So the first partial sum is gonna to converge to that number S, but our second partial sum will also converge to that same number s. And what we have on the right hand side now is s minus s, but we subtract these two s's from each other and we get zero. And that tells us then that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n 
must be equal to zero if our uh, partial sum is going to actually converge, and that means our series converges. So what the divergence test is basically telling us is the only way a series has a chance of converging is if when we look at the terms in that series, the limit of the terms goes to zero. And remember, having the limit of the terms go to zero does not guarantee that we are converging. It's just a way to check for divergence. So if we have the limit of the terms in a sum going to anything other than zero, we know right away that that entire series is going to diverge and it's probably not worth investigating uh, more deeply into. However, if we do see that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, or the terms in our series goes to zero, we aren't sure whether that series is gonna converge or diverge, but we know that we need to do some more investigation. All right, so let's go ahead and look at a couple examples of using our divergence test to test if a series actually diverges. Remember, if we can't tell if a series diverges, it means it may or may not converge. And so our first example here, we're looking at the series that is the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of n squared minus 1 over n squared plus 1. And the way the divergence test works is we take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the, uh, the terms in our series. So we're just investigating the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared minus 1 over n squared plus 1. And so we do have to remember how to find these limits from calculus one or from pre-calculus. And here uh, we can use from pre-calculus the fact that we're taking the limit of a rational function with equal degrees. And so we can find that limit by looking at the ratio of the leading coefficients, or we can use it using calculus one methods like L'Hopital's rule. Either way we go about evaluating this limit, what we should find is that the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared minus one over n squared plus one is going to approach exactly one. And so because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, or the general term in our uh, series here, goes to something other than zero, that tells us that this series must actually diverge. Another way to think about the divergence test that I think is a little bit more intuitive is, well, what actually ends up happening if the terms in our series go to something other than zero, like one in this case? That means far enough down the line, we're adding all these terms together, remember, and eventually all these terms eventually turn into a constant like one. Well, that means we're gonna be adding up infinitely many ones eventually, and well, if you add one up over and over and over, it's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and diverge off to infinity. So for this uh, series, we see by the divergence test that it actually must diverge. All right, so for our second example here, we're looking at the sum from i equals one to infinity of one over three n, which is very similar to our harmonic series, which we mentioned before. And so if we wanna to try to apply the divergence test to this series, just like before, we have to take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the terms in our series and so that is the limit as n approaches infinity of one over three n. And so here our numerator is the constant of one and our denominator is three n, but as we take the limit here, that denominator is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and itself approach infinity. So our quantity is approaching a one over infinity, which gets very small and will eventually approach zero. So for this series, the divergence test isn't really useful. Uh, we don't have enough information to determine if this series diverges or if it converges. So using just the divergence test, we don't really get a nice conclusion for this series. It may either diverge or it may converge we don't know at the moment. We will see later on using something like the integral test that this series is also going to diverge, but we can't tell that just from using our divergence test. All right, we have one more example to go through here. And so now we're looking at the series that is the sum from i equals one to infinity of cosine of one over three n. And just like before, we have to take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the terms in this series and see what happens uh, for that limit. So we're taking a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine of one over three n. 
And I'm not gonna write it all down, but here's a nice little reminder of some of the limit laws we can use here. We can pass the limit inside of our continuous cosine function and take cosine of the limit as n approaches infinity of one over three n. And we know that one over three n is going to approach zero as n approaches infinity. So the limit of the terms here is going to approach cosine of zero, which is equal to one. So because the limit of the general terms for the series approaches something other than zero, it approaches the constant of one, we know that this series is also going to diverge via the divergence test. Because similar to our first example here, once we get far enough down the line, when we're adding up the terms in this series, eventually we're just adding a bunch of ones together or something that is so close to one it is indistinguishable. And well, when we add uh, infinitely many ones together, that sum is going to increase without bound off towards infinity.